Tonight we discuss the incoming governors and the fate of Southeast government for you. And presidential election petition we won't tolerate technicalities. Tribunal warns. This is Post Politics. Diamond and Apollo. As the new administration sets in on May 29 this year, there are hopes that the umbrella body binding governors of the Southeast region, christened the Southeast Governors Forum, will begin to live up to its expectations with the caliber of governors that are to join the forum from this month. Now, the forum, which kick-started by um, the governors from the People's Democratic Party at the time, after the return of democracy in 1999, has continued to suffer from lack of commitment of its members and pol politics of interest. Now, from control by the PDP governors that held sway in 1999 to 2003, the APCA governor produced um, in Anambra State in 2005, Peter Obi joined the forum. The PPA, which produced Governor Ikedi Ohakim in Imo State in 2007, followed suit. From Ohakim, Okorocha, who won his first election in APCA in 2011 and later joined the APC, followed. As members leave and new ones join from other political parties, the goal and aspirations of the forum has continued to dwindle. Now, the, with the outcome of the 2023 general elections, are four political parties, including the APC, the PDP, Labour Party, and APCA, will now run the forum, which may have forgotten about its existence. With the likes of Alex Oti from Abia State, Peter Mba from Enugu State, and Francis Mwifuru from Eboyin State joining, and then of course Anambra State Governor Charles Toludo, and that of Imo State, Hopu Zodima, in that forum, are there tendencies that the forum could revive the work for the collective interest of Ndibo? Now, this is the big question the people in the region will want to address. And joining us to discuss this are political analysts Francis Chilaka and Charles Otu. Good evening, gentlemen, and thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. Thank you for having me, everyone. All right, great. We have less than one minute. All right, let's start call. with Francis. Um, Francis, it's very interesting that, um, just as I said in my opening, you started with a purely PDP governor's forum in the southeast and then of course different parties continued to infiltrate um you know or rather um hold sway in the governor's forum and now we've seen another shift and another change um many people would say because of the different political parties um this is what has destroyed you know uh, the hopes and aspiration of um, the people of the southeast through this governor's forum but then if these people are governors of the people in the South, should the interest of the people not be priority over party interests? Um, well, I, I would start by saying that uh, the whole essence of having a governor's forum um, is not about the political party you represent. It's about the fact that you are a governor from the Southeast. You were voted in by the people of the Southeast. Hmm. So we expect that, you know, coming together of... Um, different uh, uh, governors from different political parties, it will help to um, create a synergy where, uh, because each governor coming from their political parties, they have their own agenda, they have um, their own manifestos. So I'm sure that when they sit down on the round table, we should have a robust uh, discussion, uh, something that will be focused on developing the Southeast. It's, yeah. it's going to be interesting because um, it's not going to be like... Um, uh, it's not going to be as usual. You know, it's not going to be something that they're used to. Mm. But it's going to be a situation where uh, different political parties are coming together for the interest of the people. That is what the Governance Forum should really stand for. Mm. But then, of course, um, just as you said, these governors are supposed to work for the interests of the people um, together to confront... I mean, we all know it. It's common knowledge that the southeast of the country has had you know, the short end of the stick when it comes to um, infrastructure, development, etc., etc. But you cannot also put it past the governors, can you? Because if you don't have a governor that is pushing uh, for some of these things and this development to happen in, within their states and at, from the federal level, can we really blame the federal government if the governors in the states are not pushing for the interests of their own people? 
Well, um, let, let, let me put it the way it is, black and white. I'm not going to paint it in any other way. We've had um, governors who are very selfish, self-centered, who do not understand the fact that the people voted them into power. It's been about them. It's, it's all about them. It's not about the people. And I believe that this time around, you know, with this new um, laws and these new political parties coming together, I expect them to be able to say, look, how do we get the Southeast to work? How do we get things to work? How do we move governance from the high heavens to the ordinary people who voted us in? Mm. And I believe that, you know, with what with the new governor they have in Abia, I'm expecting a lot of changes. I have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, trust in the new in the in, uh, Alex Oti, and I believe that coming with his own ideas, merging it with the idea of somebody like Charles Soludo and so, we should have a robust forum where the the plight of the Southeasterners should be on the front burner. And for them to also say, look, we need to have um, a developmental plan for the Southeast. Mm. You know, six years rolling plan, four years rolling plan, two years rolling plan. The Southeast governors should be able to come out and lead other governors. But unfortunately, it hasn't been like that. You know, mm. because the, the greed, selfishness has overtaken everything. But I, I want to believe that uh, what we have that's going to play out is going to give us a better leadership uh, in the Southeast. Let me go to you, uh, Charles O'Toole. Let's start with Anambra State. For example, the last time I was talking to somebody from um, um, the Indigo group, uh, what's it called now, Hanez Indigo, um, we were talking about the Anambra election, which I covered, and he kept saying there's so many billionaires in Anambra State. There's so many billionaires, but I went to Anambra State. I wasn't sure if I was happy or if I was confused. Um, and that's not necessarily the fault of the billionaires, um, but of course, we're talking about good leadership. That Governor Saludo made a lot of promises as to what he's going to be doing in Anambra State that would set the pace, a competitive space uh, of, or pace uh, of sorts for other governors in the southeast to follow. Can we say that Governor Soludo has even started to scratch the surface of that particular promise? And should the governors within the forum not be competing to see who's better in terms of their developmental strides as opposed to fighting over political interests? Charles, can you hear me? Oh, I don't think we have Charles. Um, okay, um, maybe uh, Francis, you'd like to attempt? Yeah, um, you see, this is, this is what has been playing out in the Southeast. And um, we, we, I am from the Southeast, I'm from Imo State. And I, I first of all, I want to use my state as an example. Um, Imo State has not been the way it used to be. Uh, people don't even travel to the East. It's that bad. You know, um, the rate of kidnapping, the rate of killing is outrageous. Now, the question is, where is all this coming from? It's coming from the fact that you have um, a leadership that is far away from the people. Don't forget that, you know, the current governor we have in Imo State came as a result of the rulings of the Supreme Court. Mm. And the Imo people have not come to terms with that. And there has been so much anger, so much uh, frustration, so much anxiety. There's so much hatred in the land. Now, I would have expected that the governor like Hopus Adenma would come down and form a unity government and try to accuse the people. No, but it's not happening. Now, if you take it to Anambra as well, Charles Oludo, as a governor, um, has started, he started well, but he's spending so much time talking. He's spending so much time fighting fight that he shouldn't even be involved in. You know, as a governor, he should be concentrating on his state. But you can see he's been busy. Every opportunity he has, he wants to throw a swipe at um, the uh, um, Labour Party presidential candidate. So I keep asking myself, what is the problem? You know, what is the problem? Why is it that we have leaders in the Southeast that are finding it difficult to come together? The mm. Southeast is not what it used to be. It used to be a land of... Um, uh, peace and all of that, but we don't have the peace anymore. It's not there. So, mm -hmm. something is definitely wrong. And what is wrong is that those who have held sway as governors are far from the people. Mm -hmm. Their leadership style, their leadership um, is not about the people. It's about them and the interests they represent. And we need to get this um, mindset of leadership in this country. We need to begin to have leaders 
who relate directly with the people, who feel the pains of the people, who feel the pains of the people, who understand that the people, they have a voice to ask for something. Unfortunately, what you have always had is, you've had governors who believe that, oh, this community needs water. You're not asking the community what they want. Mm. You just believe that this is what they want. Mm. So we need to get that mindset off. We need to we need to have governors who are proactive. Mm. You can't be a governor, you have SS, SSA, you have SA, you have commissioners, and yet they cannot add value. And you keep them there. That's something. It's wrong. We, for me, it, it is painful, it is sad when I see the level of degradation going on in the southeast. When I see the level of kidnapping and the level of killing, I mean, look, for how many months now, they've turned Monday into a public holiday. What are the governors doing about it? Mm. So these are issues. Mm. It's killing the economic um, uh, economic um, vibrance of the state. And something needs to be done. And the only people that can be able to do something about it is the governors to sit down and say, look, there are agitations. Let us sit down. Let us discuss. I believe that negotiation and discussion is best than war. Okay. So these are things that they need to do, and they need to do it urgently. Uh, Charles, I don't know if you're back. Charles, can you hear me? I can hear you. Mr. Tu, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, please. Perfect. Let me take it to your state. I like what uh, Francis has said about the fact that um, negotiations and deliberations are important. I remember sometime last year, the Southeast Governors Forum had a, a tea party, that's what I'm going to call it, because they talked about the fact that they were going to deal with the situation of insecurity and they talked tough. And right after that tea party, everybody went to sleep and then of course everybody started campaigning and then elections were here. The elections have come and gone, but the, the, the issues in the Southeast are still pending. Now let's go to Eboni, where uh, Mwifuru has, of course, been declared the governor-elect. Does he have what it takes to deal with the situation in Eboni State? And, 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 and just like Francis said, will he be the one to ask the people what they want, as opposed to preempting what the people want? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, first, uh, for I'm not sure I can hear you, Francis. I'm um, sorry. I'm not sure I can I hear you, Giles. I can hear you. Okay, well, I can't hear you, but go ahead. Uh, the, the major challenge of the South East Governor's Forum is that of leadership. Leadership in the sense that the tenor of the chairman of the forum, appointed State Governor David Omahe, expired several months, several years ago. Mm -hmm. His tenor expired since 2021, or thereabouts. But he has held strongly to that position because he is using it to negotiate for himself. Okay. So until the, unless and until the forum purges itself of this leadership conundrum and then try to reassert itself, the forum cannot make progress. Hmm. Now to Ebony, uh, uh, the APC candidate in the election, Ogbeni uh, Awifuru was declared the winner of the election. Uh, hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, 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 even though there are contentions about that, uh, some parties are in court, the fact is remains that he will be sworn in and he is going to preside over the state. Regarding the question you posed about his capacity to galvanize and tackle issues, mm. The, the, the fact is that you take it from the current leadership position he has held. Remember that he is the Speaker of the Speech House of Assembly in Ebony. Yes. And he has been the Speaker on two tenors. That is a total of eight years of speakership. So he's a right honorable, obviously. Yes. 2015. So if you check his record and performance as a Speaker, uh, that would have answered your question. Uh, those of us in the boy, those of us who have seen how the executive have completely pocketed the legislation on its uh, front pocket, not even back pocket mm -hmm. or side pocket, I mean on the front pocket, then there is absolutely no uh, uh, expectation that will be different 
from us in terms of what we've seen. So, but then it is left for him to see if he will continue in the way of his decision, or he will take a part of, especially considering the effort of human empowerment. Mm -hmm. Because you watch, of course, the airport uh, test flight was done. I don't know whether you saw the pictures of him. Um, Rikati Paul Shubren, who found their way to the airport to scramble for, scramble for, for, for uh, crumbs. So it tells you that when they say that the point is the third poverty capital in Nigeria and, and the third poorest state in the country. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the number one poverty capital in southern Nigeria, <laughs> it is without a mission of words. It is the reality on ground. So, and so for me, the incoming government of Ebony must focus on human empowerment and ensure that human beings are paid their dues and, and when due. And uh, regarding the other issues of critical sectors like health and education, that is an area he needs to work very hard on, especially in the education sector. Mm -hmm. There is no time to the outgoing government that no classroom block was added to a boy in the last in a boy in the last eight years. The records are there in real, you can ask questions, you can Google it, you can even read some of the issues that are being contended both in health, education and agriculture. Mm. So but it is hoped that um, the incoming administration will at least take off on a different level and look at these critical sectors, including, and most importantly, human empowerment. All right. Let's quickly move away from Ebony. Let's go to Abia. Now, Abia State seems to be one of those states in the southeast that would be considered the Lagos of, you know, the southeast. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, but we also know that there's several economic activities, several things that could be developed that are still not developed. Um, I mean, compared to an Anambra State where uh, Governor Saludo says he wants to turn it into a mini Dubai. But uh, Anambra has a lot of potentials that are lying fallow, bad infrastructure. Uh, Anambra seems to have been forgotten or abandoned by its um, um, former governors and even the sitting governors, hence uh, the emergence of uh, the um, Labour Party candidate who is now the governor-elect. Um, do we see an Alex Oti able to also pull his weight, being that Abia State has... Um, been lacking in terms of good governance. Do we see any of that? Because you see, this is another person coming from the banking sector, just like a child saluder. Um, how ready is he to, you know, deal with that situation? Yeah, I, I have a very implicit confidence that Alexis will be able to turn up around. Even if I could say within the first tenor of his office, within the first tenor in office. Uh, because um, you look at people's antecedents, even in previous positions, or current positions of society. If you look at uh, Alex Lacey, for instance, the caliber of people he has assembled in his transition committee, the likes of um, Dr. Kunjo Iwala was there. A lot of liberal minds around the other governor elect. Even the speed with which, the hurry with which he is, you know, he's aimed to turn around projects and facilities within Abba, the commercial life center of Abia State. You, 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 you can beat your chest and say that this is the man who will know what he wants from the beginning. Uh, Marianne, there is something lacking in our governor's hands. I think I only see very few of even these elected governors are falling into the class of people who can correct that. And that is the asset of assembling a team that is creative. Mm. The other thing that we uh, were uh, unveiled during the transition, the uh, innovation of the digital committee, if you check across the board, you see a lot of young people from even other states of the federation who we assembled to bring their ideas on how to move our other forward. So as so long as Alex Oti keeps exposing himself to the to brilliant minds, no matter where they come from or where they come from, the most important thing is to deliver credible governance that is different from 
what the three urges, the mm. two urges, and the 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 phone, the last two that he has done in Abia. Okay. All but right. You, that pledge, uh, nothing will function. So I have I have confidence that electricity will deliver. Okay. Let me come back to you, Francis. Um, we've talked about Emo, your state. We've talked about um, Abia. We've talked about a boy. Let's talk about a Nugu. Who you know that that's one state that's not necessarily had. Um, any form of insecurity or uprisings or agitation. And I remember traveling through Enugu Airport on my way to Anambra uh, to cover the governorship elections at the time. And I said, surprisingly, Enugu has succeeded not to have the kind of insecurity that every other state surrounding it in the southeast has had. And is that as a result of good governance or uh, maybe the governor just has, you know, the, his hand on the handle when it comes to insecurity. But have they generally fared well in terms of leadership and good governance? Um, Enugu State has enjoyed peace because they've had a governor, or they've had successive governors who believe in dialogue. And, you know, like I said earlier, when you begin to talk to people, you find solutions. The war you're angling for can actually be erased the moment you sit down and begin to discuss. And this is the problem we've had in Imo. The governor is not ready to sit down and discuss with those who are agitated. As a father, if your, kid, your, your kids begin to get violent or begin to get unruly, you don't carry a cane or carry a gun to start chasing them. What you do is to call them on the round table and find out what the problem is. And the way you talk to people, the way you handle issues, will also give people the confidence to be able to relate better with you. So Anambra um, State has relatively enjoyed good governance, maybe not in terms of infrastructure, but they've enjoyed good governance in terms of relationship with the people. Mm. And this matters a lot. Every leader must have a way to draw the people to themselves. Mm. So if the other governors have done this, I am telling you, you will have peace in the Southeast. Mm. And so, f finally, before I let you gentlemen go, um, Francis, lastly, um, do we see a revival of the Southeast Governors Forum? And do we see them coming up with impeccable ideas on how to deal with the situation in the Southeast, finally? Honestly speaking, they have no choice than to do that. Mm -hmm. Because um, without, without, without what has played out right now politically, where um, at the federal level, the Southeast really has nothing, you know, in their commerce, they have nothing. So I think it's time for them to sit back as governors who have been elected by the people to ask themselves questions. How do we manage the situation at hand? They need to come together, devoid of political party affiliations. And that's the only way the Southeast can actually come back to life politically at the national level. Well, I want to say thank you, Francis Chilaka. Um, Charles or two, both are political analysts. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. This is where we have to wrap things up on this segment. Thank you. All right. Uh, coming up, presidential election petitions tribunal. We won't tolerate technicalities. We'll break this down after the break. <laughs>